In this video, we'll be talking about how Shazam is designed. Shazam is an app where users take some music and then send it to the Shazam server asking for what is the original song. When you're in a bar or in a restaurant, you want to know what song is playing and that's the main use case of this app. Now, the important thing here isn't really the architecture that is behind this. The important thing is the algorithm. What you have initially in the request is a 10 second clipping of a song and in your database, you need to choose a way in which to store original songs such that you can actually be able to match it with the incoming request and then give a appropriate response. Let's understand how we are going to be storing these songs. The first thing we'll do is we'll try to define the song in mathematical terms. So a song is after all a sound wave and a sound wave can be represented using a graph for time versus frequency. The problem is for an app like Shazam, these clippings are taken in noisy environments or they're taken in environments where there is something else spoken. Like if there's a person next to you, they'll be speaking. So this frequency graph, the original one, will be changed in the clipping maybe by something like this. There's a, there's a loud sound of a glass breaking or something. So just one parameter is not good enough to define the song for us. We need something more robust. So instead we take multiple parameters. We are going to draw a graph of time versus frequency. We are going to draw a graph of time versus amplitude. We are going to draw a graph of time versus phase and so on. Taking multiple features makes the system more robust. The more features you take, the more storage you'll require. Just imagine when you're taking a lot of space, what you mean is when there's a comparison operation going to come in, you have a lot of space to compare it with. So usually if you are able to concisely represent your song, if you're able to describe your song in a short, nice format, it usually means your search operations get faster, your storage requirements reduce. So that's our aim. We are going to try to concisely represent this song, not as an entire wave, not as a, you know, two waves, but as a set of points. So if you have to choose some interesting points in this song, which ones will they be? What you're looking for are large variations in this song, like when there is a, when the bell is played, so then there's a boom maybe over here in the song. So you want to actually note this point down because this is a special point. Around this, there are really low points and at this point, there's a really high point. Similarly, maybe there is pin drop silence at this part of the song. Around these, there's high points, but over here, there's a really low point. So you want to note this down too. You want to note down basically interesting points because despite noise, they are the ones which are likely to survive when you're recording the clipping in your mobile phone. So how do we go ahead and identify these points? You have the time, you have the frequency being plotted in this graph and the color variations you're seeing are that of amplitude. So at this time with this frequency, because it is blue, it means that the amplitude with this time and frequency was high. This is because it's a 2D graph. I can't show 3D with the, with the things coming out of the board, you know, but in a 3D way, you can actually see the amplitude in the Z axis, high, low, and so on. But with different colors, you can represent the third dimension also, which is amplitude. And you have X and Y for time and frequency respectively. The interesting points, as we mentioned, are points where there is high variation in the amplitude. So if there is blue to red, that's a high variation. If there is red to green, well, that is variation and then green to red is also variation, but again, red to blue, that is high variation. So I'll note down all the points. So these are like transition points where the, the music picks up or slows down. Both of them are easily able to define your song. And each of them can be plotted now in this 2D plane, where I just need to know the frequency at this point, let's say F1, and the time, let's say T1. These four points can uniquely identify your song. Let's try and get an idea by assuming that we got a search query for an audio clip. And if you have a clipping, it might be something like this. It just takes two of these unique points. In the audio clip also, what I'll do is I'll draw the graph very similar to this. I will take the interesting points in that clip and I'll note those points down. So let's say F X comma T X and F Y comma T Y. Let's assume these are points X and Y. Let's assume that we have these points for every song defined in our database as the frequency, amplitude and time of that given point. So for point X, you have F1, A1, and T1. Now look at the amplitudes. Are these really necessary? Because what they're telling you is that there's a transition from a high frequency to low frequency. So A1 is blue to red and A3 is green to red. If you get a query for this song, then that clipping will have the interesting points defined by X and Y, but you don't really care about the change in amplitude at that point. So if it's green to red, red to blue, doesn't really matter. 
we are mainly concerned about whether the magnitude of the amplitude change is high enough for it to be marked. Hence, we can get rid of the amplitude values because if the point has been marked, it means that there is a significant change in amplitude. Now, x and y are defined by the frequency and time. But the most important thing is that the time component is not fixed. When you get a clipping, you are not sure what is the offset of this given clipping. So it might be 10 seconds off. That means the difference between T1 and Tx is going to be 10 seconds and the difference between T3 and Dy is going to be 10 seconds again. However, the frequencies of Fx and Fy in the clipping are going to be the same as F1 and F3 in the song. So to define any two points in terms of each other, we need the frequencies of those points along with the difference in time that they have. So that is f of x, f of y and delta t for any two points x and y. So the uniquely identifying characteristics are right here for these two points and that is f1, comma f3, comma delta time. The chance of you having frequency f1 and f3 in two interesting points, which means there is high amplitude change with the same time delta is very, very unlikely. If you find the same frequencies f1 and f3 with the same time delta in a clipping, this is the song you're looking for. So we'll take all the interesting points in the incoming clip and make pairs out of them. And of course, we have to do the same thing in the database also. We have to take for every song all the pairs that you can make using the interesting points. So if you have n points, you're going to have n into n minus 1 by 2 pairs, which is something like n square pairs in this song, which are each going to have their own first frequency, second frequency, and the delta of the time between those two given points. Now let's try to think about how we are going to be optimizing this. Try and use the principles of image processing or video processing to come up with something better. Well, if you take a clipping, it's going to be 10 seconds. And if you take a song, it's going to be something like three minutes. So why not break this song into chunks of 10 seconds each? Let's say these are the chunks I have. If your query chunk matches any one of these chunks, you're good to go. But there's a problem. Your query chunk could be any point. It doesn't need to be neatly broken into the chunks that we have. You can see that your query might be from here to here. How do we handle a query which falls between two chunks? To compare a couple of points at the same time from the clip and from the original song, what we are going to do is we are going to take this original song and break it into chunks. So if there are four points, then I'm breaking them into chunks of three, the blue chunk and the green chunk. Amongst these three points, I can take any two points at a given time and compare it with X and Y, which is from the clip. So if I have eight interesting points in the original song and I'm making chunks of three, then I'll have six chunks. Because you have three points, you can make only three pairs out of this. And since you have six chunks, you'll be able to make 18 pairs in total. In general, if you take chunks of P points in an original N point song, you'll see that as N gets larger, let's say N is equal to 100 and P is equal to five, you'll see significant gains in terms of the total number of pairs that you need to create. And therefore the number of comparison operations will also reduce because you have lesser pairs to compare it with. And this is all we need. Once the original song has been broken into chunks and stored in the database, all we need to do is we need to take our clip find the interesting points, find the chunk having the maximum number of matches with our clip. And this chunk is the answer that we need. The song which actually contains this chunk is the original song that we are looking for. So you have a clear advantage using this kind of algorithm because it's not just more accurate. It doesn't do wasteful processing while storing or while searching. Instead, it can take the points in a chunk and convert it into a single hash. This is also called a combinatorial hash. Each hash is like a key in a dictionary. So when you're searching for a chunk, you just search for that particular key in the dictionary. And the song having the most number of matches with keys for its chunks is the song that you are looking for. Since the order complexity of searching in a map is order one, we can expect the search operation to be quite fast. Let's recap our algorithm. What we have is the client taking a clipping of the song finding the interesting points, converting them into chunks and sending it to the server as a set of hashes. The server then takes these hashes and then searches in its database 
for that song having the maximum number of matches with these hashes, which is returned as a response. But the important bit is that all of this pre-processing for finding out the interesting points, taking chunks, finding their hashes and storing it in the database is done beforehand. If you have any doubts on this, do let me know in the comments below. So until next time, then see you.